Good afternoon. My name is Kelly Langan. I am the district, district test coordinator for Springdale School District. Today I'll be covering remote testing guidelines with you. If your student is remote testing, they're either a virtual student or they're currently learning remotely, most likely due to a COVID-related illness. But either way, we want to help you understand the purpose behind our need to assess our students and some requirements we have to fulfill in order to be able to provide the option to remote test. Our topics of discussion today are the purpose of assessment, technology requirements, finding the test, how to log in, the best testing environment, test security, troubleshooting tips, and technical support. What is the purpose of assessment? Just like a doctor must run different tests to best serve their patients, teachers must use multiple measures to best serve their students. One way our teachers assess their students is by using the adaptive math math assessment. But a teacher's assessment is only as good as the data they receive. We need to know what each student can do and not do. So it is important that parents allow their students to work independently to allow the teachers to identify what students' areas of strength and areas of weaknesses are in order to help the students. Helping your child on an assessment may mean that the teacher is unable to identify these areas of need, which can keep your child from getting the help he or she may need. The best help you can give your students on these tests is to allow your child to work independently. The purpose of the assessment, as I've mentioned, is to accurately identify where your student is at academically. And by doing so, we can make good instructional decisions. How is the test used? Teachers are going to review the results for each individual child and plan instructional support based on the results. Teachers will also review class results and plan instruction for the small group or for the entire class. How we will not use the data. Results will be not used as grades. Scores do not determine whether a student passes or fails a grade level. And the scores are not used to evaluate your child's district school, or teacher. How is this test different from other assessments? The math growth test is a computer adaptive test. As a student correctly and incorrectly answers test items, the test is individually tailoring the skills and content each student is ready to learn. This is why students are expected to be able to only answer correctly approximately half the question. And this is why it is important for teachers to get an accurate reflection of what the student has learned and what the student's needs truly are. If the stu student answers correctly, the questions will increase in difficulty. If the student answers incorrectly, the items will decrease in difficulty. This is not a test of mastery. The tests are intentionally designed for students to only answer approximately half the item. And it's also good to let your students know that. Questions are given above and below the predicted academic level in order to determine that students' true level of academic ability. Other types of assessments we use are criteria and reference, which are tests of mastery. That's a fixed set of items and standards that we want to see if yes or no you have mastered these set of skills. Norm reference compares a student's performance against an average norm group. Summative measures the knowledge at the end of the year or semester to see if that your student is ready to move on to the next course or grade level. Technology requirements. Your student's district provided Chromebooks at the beginning of the year. The Chromebook is already equipped with the technology necessary to map test. Login and passwords must be shared securely. Either your teacher will post them to the class LMS or send them via a secure email to your student's school email address. What do we need in order to assess your child at home? We need the digital device, which is your Chromebook, not a cell phone. 
it is important to note that cell phones do not meet the minimum technical specifications for testing as a home device. You'll need internet connectivity, a webcam, internal or external. It's recommended but not required. Speakers, internal or external. They are required for the K2 assessment. It is good to have a microphone, which internal or external, not required. And you'll have to have the login and password. Again, the Chromebooks the district provided provides the webcam, speakers, and microphones. Where do we find the map test? Open a browser and go to test.mapnwea.org. That will bring you to a login screen that looks like this. The login or the session name and password must be shared securely. Your student's teacher will either post them to the class LMS or send them via a secure email to your student's school email address. When logging in, you will enter the session name into the session name field and the password, then click on the blue arrow. Select your student's name from the list of students also in the session. Verify that you have selected the correct student. You have options on this page to, if you have not selected the correct student, select no, and that'll take you back to be able to select the correct student. And if it is you, then you can select yes. After you have selected and confirmed that you are the student, you will wait for your teacher to confirm your participation. Now let's talk about the best testing environment. Research tells us that students perform better after a good night's rest and a good breakfast. A student who is less anxious will always perform better academically. Students should have a quiet area away from noise and distraction, such as the TV. Make sure the student has a well-lit area. Check the computer brightness and for glares on the computer screen. Most students perform their best when seated at a table with an appropriately sized chair. Research tells us students perform better academically in the morning or early afternoon. Easing test anxiety. Physical symptoms and emotional reactions that interfere with your student's ability to perform well on tests is test anxiety. Have a conversation with your students. Explain to them the purpose of the test. And that purpose is so that we as teachers can better understand where they are academically so we can best provide them educational instruction. Tell the student that he or she is not expected to know all of the answers. Remember, it's designed so that they're only expected to get about 50% of the items correct. Assure the student that this assessment is not used for a grade, which it's not. This is not a grade. It's not going to determine whether they pass onto the next course and it's not used to evaluate the district, school, or teacher. Another way to reduce test anxiety is to prepare the device the day before the assessment. You wanna make sure that the testing app is downloaded or that the website is bookmarked and ready to go. Does your student know how to access the test? Do you know where the test login and password information are? there is an expiration time on the login and password information. So if you've gotten a login session name and password on a Tuesday and you're expecting to test on a Friday, you're gonna to need to get another set of credentials to log in from your teacher because those credentials will have expired. So check back with the teacher or on the LMS to see 
you what login information you need to get into your session. Test security. What is it and why do we do this? Test security is protecting and maintaining the contents of the assessment. Why is it important? By protecting and maintaining the contents of the assessment that allows us to treat the results as valid and trusted. Valid results allow teachers to make the best instructional decisions possible for their students. The test security agreement. What's the purpose of the test security agreement? To provide information to the parent guardian regarding general test expectations. A list of actions for parents to follow in order to protect the security of the assessment and the integrity of your child's test results. Which goes back to the purpose of the assessment. The test being used as an instructional tool for the teachers. Each year, teachers also must go through training and signing of test security agreements. So this is not personal to parents. Everyone administering a test must have training and sign the agreement. What the security agreement says. Every parent guardian of a student who is involved in remote administration of any state provided assessment must sign the security agreement prior to engaging in remote testing. Those tests could include the ACT Aspire Periodic, the MAP assessment, or the civics exam. Students may not test remotely without this signed security agreement on file with the district. What you are agreeing to when you sign, I will not read or review the passages or test items before, during, or after testing, including viewing responses on the screen. I will not save, copy, or otherwise reproduce, such as recording or taking a picture of, all or any part of the test or security test materials or student responses with anyone, especially students or school personnel, through verbal exchange, email, social media, or any other form of communication. It is really easy to have a test question come up and you just want to snap a picture with your cell phone because it's right there and send it to the teacher and say, hey, I have a question about this question. That is completely prohibited. That is a violation, which would be an irregularity, which we'll get to in a minute. I will not reveal or discuss all or any part of the test or security test materials or student responses with anyone, especially students or school personnel through verbal exchange, email, social media, or other form of communication. I will not coach students or give verbal or nonverbal cues during testing or alter or interfere with students' responses in any way. Again, remember, as teachers, we just wanna be able to best help your students and with this assessment, we need to know where they are academically. I will not violate the guidance provided in local test administration training. And this is your training. I will not allow students to access an electronic device, including but not limited to cell phones, tablets, smartwatches, etc., other than the testing device during the test administration. Cell phones should be in another room when they are taking the test. I will not allow student use of a cell phone or other prohibited electronic device other than as approved in the local test administration policy for communication. I have been trained in test administration and or test security. The security of all test materials must be maintained before, during, and after test administration. I understand what actions are strictly prohibited. If any prohibited actions occur, I will notify my child's teacher Engaging in prohibited activities may result in student score invalidation. I have discussed with my child the expectations and limitations of remote testing. And that's why I asked you to sign. Now I mentioned test irregularities. Should something happen, let's say 
your student's testing and phone goes off and they forget and they answer their phone. That is considered a test irregularity. At that point, you need to contact the teacher and tell the teacher what happened so she can document that irregularity. Because it's possible that that student test might be considered invalid. Again, the point of the assessment is for us to make accurate instructional decisions. And if something has impacted the test results, we need to make sure we have that documented. So if there's any kind of test irregularity, that's something that goes against what is on this signed document, make sure you contact your teacher and let he or she know. Troubleshooting tips. If a page seems blank, try reloading it and pressing the refresh, refresh button at the top of the screen. If you get kicked out of a session, try logging back in. Your teacher will see that you're waiting to be confirmed again on their screen. Be familiar with your teacher's communication policy in case there is a problem. Technical support. It's a good idea on that login screen. There's a practice map test. Run through that. Become familiar with the testing item. Your teacher has a login information set and can help you with it. During the assessment, Monitor progress of your student and ensure that technical difficulties are not preventing your student from trying their hardest. Not only will that frustrate your student, but that'll also produce those invalid results you don't want. When your student finishes the assessment, help him or her shut down the map growth assessment window. We appreciate all you do as parents, and we thank you for your support in this. This is a very transitive year for all of us, and we appreciate you. We just want to let you know. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please contact your child's teacher, and they will get back.